aspiring mathematicians. Today, I am going to discuss the topic of radians and I am going to actually show you how to convert radiant to degrees and also to convert degrees back to radiant. Now, you will find radiant in a circle. Now, what is radiant? Now, the radiant is the measure of an angle that when it is drawn as a central angle, it subtends an arc whose length is equal to the length of the radius of the circle. Now, if you have the circle here, this is the central angle you have we call it the angle measure and so you can also say that angle a o b would be a central angle so if you want to know the measure of this and you're given radians i'm going to show you how to convert from radians to degree and also how to convert from degree back to radian now also you need to know other things about radiant. Now, radiant is a measure of the ratio of the length of the arc intersected by an angle to the radius of the circle. You know off the top that this is the radius. Okay, so this is the R for radius. And if we have AOB as a central angle, this is a subtended arc, or this is what we call the subtended arc right here. So you have your arc there, and we can note that the radian is the measure of the ratio of the length of the intersected arc, right, to the radius of the circle. So we have our circle here, and now I'm going to also highlight other things that you need to note based on the circle. So if you want a semicircle, we know that a semicircle is a half of a entire circle and we can draw a line through here and that would now be our diameter. Now since we have our diameter here we also need to know in terms of degree that if you have a straight line such as what you see here which is a semicircle this is going to be 180 degrees turn. So we have our zero degree here and when we do a semicircle, it's going to be 180 degrees. When you continue around, this is going to come back to 360 degrees. So the complete degree around the circle is 360 degrees. Now, in terms of a radiant, right, we need to denote what the radiant is. So if we have the radiant in terms of radiant now, we can say 180 degrees is equivalent to what we call a radiant and we use this as a radiant and we can also show you what 270 degrees would be and also what 90 degrees would be. Now 90 degrees is half of the distance from here coming around and if you form that 90 degrees you are going to go through your central angle here form another diameter and now you have that 90 degrees here and I will put the 90 degrees there so this is now 90 degrees here will be 270 degrees and so for 90 degrees you'll have pi over 2 and for here you will have 3 over 2 pi so say for instance you are given the measure of 90 degrees and you want to convert that 90 degrees. So we're going to convert, right? And we're going to do here degree to radian. And also we're going to do the conversion from radian to degrees. And there are two formulas that you need to know. And the formulas are, from degree to radian, you're going to do this times pi symbol over 180 degrees. That's what you're going to multiply it by. And from radian to degree, when you're doing the conversion, you are going to multiply that by 180 degrees over the radian. And the pi symbol, so if you're converting from degree 
to radian is pi over 180 degrees. And if you're converting from radian to degree, it is 180 over pi. So let's get into a few examples for you. And first and foremost, I'm going to do the first one where we are converting. I'm going to prove to you how we arrived at pi over 2 for the 90 degrees. So let's get right into it. We have a 90 degrees and we need to convert it, right, to radiant. So we have 90, we're going to multiply it by pi over 180, which is going to be our symbol there. And when we reduce this, we will get 1, 90 into 90 is 1, and 90 into 180 is going to be 2. And that's why we are getting a pi over 2. That's the pi over 2 there. Now you can continue. And if you want to prove for the 180. So now you have 180 degrees. And you need to convert that. So we have 180 degrees. And we're going to multiply it by pi over 180 degrees. We are going to simplify this. And when we simplify this. This cancel out, this cancel out, we get just pi, or what we call a radiant. So this is what it is. Now, you can continue with the 270. So let's try for 270 degrees. And for the 270 degrees, you're going to multiply that by pi over 180 degrees. And you are going to reduce this. And when you reduce this, you notice now, get rid of the zeros there, 9 into 27 is 3, 9 into 18, 2. So your answer will be 3 over 2 pi. And for 360 de degrees, you're going to do 360 times pi over 180. You're going to reduce these and you will notice that you will end up with simply 2 pi for here. So you can go ahead and throw in that 2 pi over here for your 360 degrees. So you might be saying to yourself, okay, that is fine for our numbers for 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and 360 degrees. But what about numbers that are in between those major points? Now, if you're talking about the first quadrant, and I hope you should know about the first quadrant, but if you don't know about the first quadrant, your first quadrant is usually anything between 0 and 90 degrees. That's your first quadrant. This is quadrant 1. This is your second quadrant. This is your third quadrant. And this is your fourth quadrant. So if I choose a number between the first quadrant there, and I choose, say, the number 15, so let's try for 15 degrees. So 15 times pi over 180 degrees, and we are going to simplify this. So we're going to say 15 into 18 is going to be 1 time with the remainder of 3. 15 into 30 is going to be 2 times. So our answer here is going to be pi over 12. That is your answer. Now, if I want to choose a number that is in the third quadrant, you can go ahead and do so. And for a number in the third quadrant, let's say, um, let's do 200. So I want to convert to 200. So we have 200 times pi over 180. We can simplify this and we will do so by getting rid of our zero first. And then we find a number that can both go into the 20 and into 18. So we can find 2, which we will get 9 there. And this will give us 10. So we will now have 10 pi over 9 or 10 over 9 pi for our answer there. And that 200 would take us somewhere about here. Okay, somewhere about here, which would be uh, 10 over 9 pi, which is more than 1, but not quite 1 and a half. And that is the same as 200. You would place it there on your unit circle.
Now, that is what it is for converting degree to radians. So now I'm going to show you how to convert from radians to degree. And if we're given the radian, we need to know the formula that we're going to apply in order to get our answer in degree. So we have the radian here and the formula is that we're going to multiply what radian we're given by 180 over pi. And that's the formula we are going to use. So let's get started with that formula right there. So now I gave you say radian, which is pi over two, and you need to convert it to degree. So pi over two multiplied by 180 degrees over pi. And we are going to simplify this. And when we simplify this, we notice that we'll get here that 2 into 180 is going to be 90, so our answer there is 90 degrees. That's why we have that. You can do the same thing for our pi here. So we have a pi and we need to convert it to radians, so we have pi times 180 degrees over pi. The pi is going to be cancelled out, and this way you will notice that what you have left is simply 180 degrees as your answer. If you want to change the radian, which is 3 over 2 pi to degrees. So multiply by 180 degree over pi. And to do so, we are going to simplify what we have. So get rid of your pi symbol, 2 into 180 is going to be 90, 90 times 3 is going to be 270 degrees. Now this is all good because now we can see where that is located on the unit circle. But you might say to yourself, but what if I have a radiant that is not the basic four points on the unit circle and I need to do that calculation? It's fine. I'm going to use the same concept where you're going to use that radiant that is given to you and convert it. So let's show you that example. So say for instance, I have five over six pi, which is in radian, and we need to change it to degrees. So I'm gonna multiply it by 180 over pi. So when I do that, I'm going to simplify my numbers and also get rid of the pi. So that is gone. So 6 into 180 is going to be 30, and so 5 times 30 is going to be 150 degrees. Now, what does that mean? Your radiant now is 150 degrees. Let's look on the unit circle. It is before you reach 180, and it is after 90. So it's going to be somewhere, I would say, about around here, maybe 150 degrees. And this is where it's located. And this is 5 over 6 pi. You'll notice it's not the same. It is actually 1 sixth less than the pi here, which is at 180 degrees. So be careful when you're working with radians and when you're working with degrees. And we're not talking about, oh, like 100 degree weather where it's hot. You know the song, it's getting hot in here. We're not talking about that degree, we're talking about your unit circle and in terms of trigonometry or in terms of algebra, that's what we are talking about. And this you will find in your Algebra 2 unit. So with that being said, I hope that you have gained some knowledge on how to convert from radian to degree and also how to convert from degree to radian. The formulas are there as a guide to help you and please apply the formula well. A caveat, let me give you a bonus, an easy way to remember the formula when you're doing this calculation. I'm quite sure a lot of you might go into an exam and you're forgetting the formula and guess what? This is an easy way to remember which formula to use. So if you are given radiant, right? Think of the radian as a number that is going to be here, right here. And in order to get rid of that, to get to degrees, because the degrees is here on the top, 
you're going to use the formula with the reading at the bottom to cancel out. So you cannot use this formula if you had 1 6 pi times pi over 180. No, this is not going to work because then you're not going to get your answer in degree mode. So you know, nope, not going to work. You need to have this at the bottom. If you're given, even if it's written as this, pi over 6 times, you need to have that pi at the bottom and the 180 at the top in order to convert from reading to degree. But if you are given the degree, which say for instance is 30 degrees now, you need to multiply by the formula because it's either going to be 180 over pi or pi over 180. But because now if you have degrees and you need to change it, in order to get the answer in radian, then you must have your radian at the top and then your 180 degrees at the bottom to cancel out in this way because you have to cancel out in this way and this would be correct. If you find yourself doing this, then you know off the top, no, this is not going to work. Not going to work because you're not able to reduce anything. You should be able to reduce. So this is the key way of remembering which formula to use because if you're given a radiant and you know, okay, your yeah, radiant is here as in this example, then you need the radiant to be at the bottom in order to cancel out diagonally. So that is a key way for you to remember. If you're given degree and you need to get it in radian, then your 180 degree has to be at the bottom. And I hope that that trick will help you to remember which formula to use in your conversion. Please be mindful and think strategically and extend your memory so that you can know which formula to use. Remember, it has to be cancelled out diagonally. And if you can't, then you know use the other formula. It's always going to be either 180 over pi or pi over 180 degrees. He said, I hope that this video has helped you tremendously. And now that you know how to convert from radiant to degrees and degrees to radiant, as in terms of your unit circle, I hope that you will go ahead and utilize it when you are given a math problem to deal with radians or degree conversion. Guess what? Don't keep this to yourself. Share it with others around the world so they too can learn about math. I hope that you will go back and watch this video. And if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you like what you see, hit that like button. And guess what? Don't keep this to yourself. No. Share it with others around the world so they too can learn about mathematics. And see you soon on the next video to come. Bye now.